This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Thank you for being here today, everybody. When we're young, in love, and newly married, we feel like nothing could stop us. We found our soulmate, and the romantic love is on fire. Then, the kids come into the picture, and there's a little less time for us. So how do we continue to make our marriages a priority with the responsibilities of parenthood? How do we align our actions and our finances to support a healthy marriage? Today, I've invited two guests on the show who are going to help me answer these questions. Brandy and Lance Salazar are the dynamic duo behind Legendary Couples with Kids. This is a community and a safe haven for parents who want to improve their marriage. After going through some rocky times together in their marriage and then choosing to do the hard work to repair their relationship, they are now dedicating themselves to helping other married couples thrive. As parents to two young daughters and busy entrepreneurs, they know all too well that the marital struggles we all face as busy parents can be quite difficult. Welcome to the show, Brandy and Lance. How's it going? Yeah, it's going great. Hey, Thanks Andy. Yeah, that was a great intro. Oh, I mean, well, you know what? <laughs> I like right. that one. You guys have an incredible story, and I'm really excited to learn from you today. Uh, Brandy, let's jump right back all the way to the beginning. Why were you and Lance considering divorce just four short years ago? Hmm. Well, we were really disconnected and fighting and just frustrated with each other, growing apart. Um, A lot of what we see a lot of other couples going through after kids. You know, we had really full plates when we got married and full plates when we decided to have kids. And then when we put those kids on the plate, it was it was overfilling with responsibility and we found ourselves overwhelmed and the marriage became became the topic of our frustration. Yeah, and I think what we went through, you know, is really common for a lot of married couples. And we found ourselves, you know, in the position of yearning, sort of this yearning for what life was like before, you know, having kids. You know, Brandy and I would, oh, let's go wine taste, you know, sure. You know, we can just go drive off into the hills and go taste wine or or just go out on a date and just enjoy each other's company. And suddenly we're thrust into this environment of having to take care of these, these, these new, uh, this new being that we had no experience doing. And I, you know, that's where I think a lot of the fighting and things start to happen and resentment and just, you know, looking back on life and not, and feeling as, as though there's a loss hmm. as to what life was like before kids came along. Right? Yeah. So when the kids came into the picture, it obviously completely changes the whole relationship Everything. dynamic. And I'm, I'm speaking yeah. from experience too. I've got a six-year-old and a three-year-old and having the ability to just have a conversation with my wife is very difficult right now in our relationship. So I, I completely mm-hmm. feel where you guys are coming from. So when, at, at what age, when these, when your kids were coming into your life, did you start to see this separation a little bit in your, in your marriage? Well, what's interesting is that we started marriage counseling bef- um, before we were pregnant with our second. Mm. And so um, the first one, and we, we were both, um, we were worked, both work, worked full time and um, had really busy lives. So that first one really like affected our dynamic and affected our relationship. So we were already struggling and then we went to counseling and, and, made it, you know, a couple of band-aids. And then we had that second one. And by the time she was a year and a half, it was, it was, yeah, that's, it was not good. And so, and then that's where it it really compounded and not even worse. Even from the moment we really had the the first one up the moment, but, uh, you know, as we started to feel as though we were like, even maybe failing as, as parents, or at least as a married couple, we had this cycle so four years ago, when we were considering divorce, it, it certainly wasn't the first time we had the conversation. You know, for, for me, it was when it became very, very real because I felt at my lowest. But, it, you know, it wasn't the first time we'd gone to counseling. We'd try we yeah. would try other Got ways, marriage courses, marriage courses yeah. that just they just didn't work for us. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, it was that four years ago where it just finally came to this head of like, this is absolutely like the, the final straw. Yeah. We, we, we're going through this cycle of, up you know, down. up and down, up and down, up and down. 
So it is. So to answer the question, you know, the first time was, you know, our, our, when I knew I was unhappy, I think our first daughter was six months old. Okay. And then it just, again, it was like a small fix down to the tanks, small fix down to the tanks until it was at its worst. What was the career situation like for both of you at this time? What were, what were you both doing? Um, I was an entrepreneur and, and flipped houses and had a, a real estate company and Lance was a pharmacist. I was a pharmacist. So yeah. we had actually very different careers. You know, I, I was going through, a, a, I would say, a, a stage or a phase of depression. In a lot of ways, watching my wife, from a business perspective, do what she wanted to do on her terms and, and thrive from a personal growth perspective. And here I was, you know, not that there's anything wrong with being an employee, but I wasn't necessarily happy with my job, nor was I exposed mm -hmm. to, you know, concepts or theories or books, events or whatever else on how to grow me, how to be a better me. It was just, you know, clock in, clock out, mm -hmm. do what you're asked to do. And that's it. And here I have my wife who's like, yeah, crushing it, you know, from that business perspective. And, and there was this, there was this split, you know, she was going in one way and I was going a, in another direction. Mm -hmm. Right. And note to self, don't come home from conferences and say, this is what you need to do. <laughs> and that's what it was. It, she, she'd come back fired up in some sort of real estate event. Like, this is what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, I didn't feel as though I had, you know, say in the matter. And it was, it was right. just, you know, there was a lot of battling. Yeah, I've noticed that. I, I, I read something or I listen to a podcast and, and I, I have got all this great knowledge in my brain. And then I say, mm -hmm. honey, here's what you should do. Or here's what, and she's like, <laughs> How's that I work? don't care what you're saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a different, it's a different planet or it's a different, you know, conversation, different, different language that you're speaking in the position that you were in Lance, you know, not being satisfied with your position or, or where you were currently in your career, that probably didn't help quite a bit when no, you know, didn't. as you said, as as she was growing her successful and and the um, the real estate flipping, that's a that's a quick, intense uh, 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 a company or a position to have, too. I mean, you got to you got to do it fast. You got to be at it really, mm -hmm. really intensely in order to make the profits. Isn't that right? Right. And I also it was a it was a really large fund. Yeah. And so there's investors, there's employees, there's the all the things you just said. So there were a lot of, of moving parts and, you know, kind of back to the, where the separation was happening in our marriage. I had myself stretched too thin. Yeah. You know, I was just so busy all the time that, you know, I kept saying that my marriage and my health and my kids were my priority. But at the end of the day, you know, what got the best of me yeah. was that business. Yeah. That's really interesting. You're saying that. So so Lance, not super excited with the career level. You're you're happy with the success that you have, but it's 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 stealing your time from the important things, or at least the things that you said were important in your life at that time. Am I getting that right? Right, you are getting it right. And the interesting piece to this, where things are different today, is that you know it's it, raising kids isn't easy, yeah. and there there isn't a lot of praise. And so when you come home from crushing it. <laughs> And you walk in and the kids are complaining or fighting or, you know, the house is a mess and all of these things where I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead and go back. I'm going to go crush it some more. Where, where <laughs> they think I'm awesome. Okay. They think I'm awesome back here. You guys don't know how cool I am. Wow. That's so real so, what you just said. Thank it's you. It's so true. Yeah, it's so true. And so it's hard. And a lot of my worth, um, unfortunately, was based on my performance. Yeah. And so until I worked on myself enough to feel worthy to have, you know, no praise at home, it was hard for me to be home sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, speaking to the money component of, you know, what's important in your, in your podcast, Andy, is that, you know, she was doing really well financially, but the amount of time she was spending in that business wasn't the right trade in that regard. You know, we were... Right. Everything, you know, financially we were doing great and everything was fine, but we were both miserable. Yeah. Yeah. So. And vice versa. You know, he had a career. So, so all the things that we're bringing in, what all of us are working so hard for, you know, it's like, what do we want? We want the big house. We want the stuff. We want the, you know, the bank account and the savings and all of these things that we work so hard for. And for us at the end of the day, especially now being where we are in our journey, mm -hmm. 
it wasn't really making us happy. Yeah. When, when did it come to a head? I understand that, um, you know, we, we talk about the word divorce. You guys were thinking about that, making even some plans on, on physical separation. Yeah. Uh, when, when did this come about and, and, and how did that manifest itself? Well, um, girls were about two and five, three and six ish. Almost six and three. They were about yeah. two or three months away from their six and third birthdays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, again, like I said, everything on the outside looked so amazing. And so when you live in a a world like that, and there's this one piece in your life where you're like, man, you know, this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. And there's this marriage here in the middle that really kind of (laughs) sucks. You know, it's like, what are we showing our daughters? Like, what are we what are we doing? Why are we doing this? If we're bickering all the time, we're fighting all the time. We aren't intimate very often. We're really not even friends anymore. Do we really even like each other? What are, what are we doing? Hmm. And it just got to a point where it was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Hmm. I'm not. And it, and again, I was the driving force. I think a big component to that was I was on a really radical self growth journey with the people that I surrounded myself outside of the home. And so it was, it was hard again to come home and say, well, you're miserable, you know, (laughs) yeah, this is, this is awesome. So actually I'm going to go, no, you're going to go, you're going to find a place to go. And yeah, that's, that's what happened. Wow. Okay. So some, some discussions were, or thoughts were happening in your head about where this is going to go. Did you guys obviously I, it sounds like divorce papers weren't weren't uh, developed, but some conversations or thoughts in your brain about, you know, what does this mean for the kids? What does this mean for our assets? Were, were those some of the things that were happening in your brain? I can only imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, it was it was so real this time and I was at my all time low with regard to myself and in my marriage that the the things that were swirling through my brain at the time is, well, where am I going to go? I'm looking up, you know, the best housing I can find nearby. You know, I, I, my, my mind, I was losing sleep at night, imagining, you know, visualizing the conversation we were going to have, you know, with our daughters that, you know, daddy was moving out and it, it just was like a, a punch to the, to the gut. Yeah. That wasn't you know? going to be easy. No, it wasn't. And I know Brandy would say in her mind, she was, you know, figuring out who was taking the cats and the dogs and, you know, I mean, you know, who was getting the furniture and all of the, all of that was, was going on. So. I was going to let him have all the furniture so I could get new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> strategic. Strate- <laughs> that's the strategic entrepreneur in you. I see that. <laughs> like, yeah. listen, I'll give you all the stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I applaud you guys for, for having the, the, the spirit and the joy that you have in your voice right now, because sharing a, a personal topic like this is yeah. difficult, but you know how important it is for people who are feeling these feelings right now in their lives. Amen. Parents with young kids, they need this message. They need these, um, this type of conversation, the, the, the realness of this. Um, so let's, let's talk about how, how it all turned around. What was the moment that you then said, you know what? This relationship is worth it. What, what, what changed? What changed from that low to I'm going to make this work? So there were a, a couple of things. There was a period of time and then there was a, this one moment. So <clears throat> when things were at their worst and um, I knew that I couldn't get through this period on my own, I did what I was always trained to do, and that's hire a coach. And so I hired this really, really intense, like yelling, cussing, bald man that was unbelievable. (laughs) And um, I heard him speak once and we were on the board of a charity together. And and I was like, that's the guy. That's the guy that's going to kick my butt right now. So how do I get him to coach me? So anyway, he was working on me for uh, a few months and was doing a really good job of getting me out of my victim. And in our marriage, I was the victim. He doesn't do this. He doesn't make me feel this way. I am miserable. I have to get out of this bad situation. So 
I was in this victim mode and anytime I would complain on a coaching call, he would do a really good job of saying, so, so what you're telling me is you don't let your husband feel like a man or you don't empower your husband to feel safe or you don't create a safe space or you emasculate them, or all these things that he kept bringing up to me. And it was like this little piece from call to call that just started filing away. And he had me do different exercises that started to slowly change some of this behavior. And then I'm sitting at a coffee date with a mentor of mine, a a woman who had um, experienced divorce. Mm -hmm. And we're actually talking about creating this um, entrepreneurial um, women's uh, mastermind group. And she's talking about how she wants to involve her partner, her her boyfriend in it. And I'm like, "Uh, if we could just avoid having that whole setup, that'd be great. And she's like, really? Because I just feel like it's really powerful in a relationship. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be in a relationship. So if you want (laughs) to launch this together, we got to do it. And she's like, wait, what? You and Lance? You got no, what? No way. Because if you look at Facebook and you look at Instagram, we are glorious on social media. Oh, we have cute kids. We've got a gorgeous (laughs) home. I mean, we are crushing life, right? And so anyway, just like, you know, Rock Thomas, my coach, Bev sits across from me and says, so let me explain to you what this will look like. And let me bring you a different perspective. You have two wonderful people. You're not talking about a man that, that, you know, abuses you or all these other things that some relationships go through. You're talking about a good, hardworking man with a great heart that is going through a hard time and hasn't had an opportunity to, you know, blossom into the person that he was meant to be. And you're so hard on him that guess what? he's going to find another woman that's hard on him because that's what he's attracted to. So you know who that person is? That's now your new stepmom to your children. And like she goes through this whole thing with me and she's like, right. And then she's like, and then you're, you know, dividing your assets and then your children are living in two different homes. And have you really worked on this? And what would it look like if you had an awesome marriage with this guy? And I would be like, well, it's amazing. It would, it would be amazing. Well, then why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? I was like, Oh, and you love challenges. So, So you're telling me it'll (laughs) suck if I get divorced and there's an opportunity here. And she flat out said to me, I wish I didn't divorce my husband. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Because if I knew what I knew now after going through it years and years ago, and this was a a long time ago for her, if I would have known what I know now, I wouldn't have done it. I would have worked on it and I would have put the work in. And she and I have very similar personalities. So she knew a lot of the similar struggles that we, or we had similar struggles. So what, yeah. what were some of the what were some of the first things you decided to do to to make a change um, at that moment when when you had that when those when you had those two good influences in your life that said make this work yeah well this is interesting so that day I leave that coffee date I walk through the front door of my house and I said to him hey uh, not only are we not getting divorced but we are going to make the most amazing marriage that we possibly can. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And the cool thing about it was, you know, the way we went about it too, and I think a little bit earlier to what even that was this, the idea of putting the marriage on the shelf. Yeah. Right. We both knew that, you know, through her coaching with, with rock and her conversations with, with Bev was that, Oh man, I've got some baggage and some programming and some things about myself that I need to work on. Right. I felt the same way even though it was from a different perspective, mine was more from a lack of confidence and being depressed and not happy with my trajectory in in life and what my purpose was or what my passions were that I I felt that through the years I've lost some of myself. And so we both agreed that we needed to work on ourselves first. Let's put Mm -hmm. the marriage on the shelf, so to speak. Let's, you know, keep the kids alive, make sure the house doesn't burn down, you know, that they get to where they need to be, that they're fed, that we're fed. Uh, and work on ourselves. We don't don't work to worry about the intimacy components of it. Right. Or Just even relieve. the past. We, yeah. We're not going to talk about we'll throw away the past. Yeah. We're not going to talk about the frustrations anymore. We are going to take a really radical approach and take massive action on our own personal growth. And that was the journey. And I still have Rock. So I, I had you know Rock coaching me, and then 
he started, he went to his, you know, the first event he went to, which was a Hal Elrod event yeah. and immediately hired a coach and got his own personal growth coach. He started doing CrossFit and, you know, met this group of guys that were all on fire for life and, you know, I being seeing, healthy. I started seeing life through a different lens. Yeah. I regained confidence. I got my mojo back, if you want to call it that way. You know, it was really what it was. She started to earn my trust again. And I started to be the man I was proud of being because even going through this process, I wasn't always certain because of our past, whether or not this was truly going to work out. Mm -hmm. right. And so when we decided at first, you know, that we were going to call it quits, you know, a lot, a lot of people will say they'll stay, they stay together because of the kids. So they stay in this mundane, you know, relationship uh, or because of the kids. Yeah. But we actually felt that we could be better people apart than the relationship we were modeling for for them. And so I took the approach of like, you know, started doing a lot of person reading personal growth and development books, meditating, like she said, CrossFit. I just started doing new things, all these new uncomfortable things I was afraid of or didn't know anything about and started gaining this, this confidence and it and let go of what she was going to how she was going to react to anything that I did because I thought, okay, if this doesn't work out, I need to be a different person for the next relationship, or else I'm going to carry the same crap from this one into the next. And he did. He took. He honestly, it's it. This is such a beautiful part of the story. He did so much in a short period of time. It's like you know, it's like someone saying, you know, what, I'm going to lose 30 pounds this year, or. I'm going to work on my money mindset or I'm going to work on my, um, you know, my meditation practice. Lance was like, no, F this. I'm rolling it all out. And he literally went all in and like just. And so from my perspective, as I'm now working through some of my childhood issues and my controlling issues with this coach that I have, I'm sitting here watching my husband go this guy. Yeah. But at the same time, what my coach was doing was giving him a safe space because I was backing off. So this control energy that I had had this like, um, you know, irritability kind of always in a rush and in a bad mood and everything stressing me out kind of thing that I had at the, the house was was backing off. And he had this safe space to come in and be himself. And this new self was this this person that at the end of the day, honestly, and I think this is probably why we lasted as long as we did. He was always in there and I knew it. I knew he was there. It was just that life had just kind of caught up with him, you know, or both of us really. We and morphed us into people we didn't like. We being. didn't really like. You yeah. Know, my job, even like going back to the job, it was making me a person I didn't enjoy being. Right. You know, from that We'd perspective. We lost ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we began to find ourselves again, we decided or realized we actually still love each other and we still like each other uh, and, and our friends. And and so knowing the patterns of what we'd experienced, you know, in this, what, eight or nine years of our relationship mm -hmm. of the getting back to okay to not being good again. And it was like getting back to zero all the time. It was fixing what was broken all the time. And so then I remember like when things weren't good, I would sit on the bed when Brandy was actually being affectionate towards me and liking me in my mind. I was thinking, when is it going to suck again? Hmm. You know? So when, when this, when these new so newfound changes came about and we, we were loving each other again, we sat down and said, okay, no longer are we going to go through this cycle of this, this pattern this, this, that we've been constantly going through. We're going to look off into the horizon and we're going to create the, the marriage, the relationship that we want, just like a, a business or your health or anything else that you set goals and, and, and things for. We did that for our Steps, relationship. Habits. Yeah, yeah, plans, objectives. habits, what, and checking it. in and checking the boxes, you know. I mean, it sounds a little unsexy and maybe a, not insincere, but, but that maybe not super connecting at first, but doing that and checking in and holding each other accountable to taking those steps we eventually just we didn't or have to do or, that anymore. Or it sounds right. like the most important thing you could do in your whole life. That too. Right. Right. So, Isn't that the truth? Like absolutely. you take the same principles that you, we, you know, we've all, we've hired these coaches for yeah. years and it's like, they tell, Oh, this is how you're going to crush it in business. This is how you're going to have a six pack. This is how you're going to do all these things. Well, we'd never applied it to our, our marriage. Well, let's, let's manifest that a little bit. So, you know, 
I talk a lot about finances on the show. I talk a lot about goals, things like that. It's it's very easy and mathematical to say, hey, I've got a right. goal of becoming debt free, and I have this amount, and I'm going to do it in this time frame. How do you apply the same sort of goal oriented mindset to improving your marriage? So the the most simple way. Um, Years ago, I, you know, as another coach that I had had, he had, you know, <laughs> given me this little life wheel and it was, you know, rate yourself from one to 10 on your health and your, you know, all the things. And so what we started doing was setting goals for ourselves. And first we, we cast a division, like, what do we want this to look like? What do we want our, our self to look like? Like, what are my passions? What do what, what would I be doing if I were my optimal self? What would we be doing if, if we had an amazing friendship and a great partnership as parents and managing our finances and our household and passionate lovers? Like what is each one of those, we call those the, the four relationship elements. What if all of those were at their best? What does it look like? Well, now that's, that's your gauge. And so just like in in anything else, you then said, okay, well, then what are the actions that make us feel at our best? Or what are the actions that lead us to the, the, the optimal in, in each one of these areas? And then it's as simple as checking in. Hmm. Hey, it's Friday night. At the, at the end of this week or Sunday night, at the end of this week, from 1 to 10, how do you feel in our friendship? At the end of this, you know, this week, just this week. Let's not talk about prior to that. This week, how does it feel? How, how do you feel in our intimacy this week? And you well, feel that you, I, yeah. you feel that open communication, that fierce honesty, is the key to success. Hundred percent. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, because without you know, it's just like anything else. If you're not meeting certain targets, or things need to be things need to be changed, right? You know, you got to course correct a little bit. Well, maybe this, we weren't doing this like we said we were going to. Well, maybe we need to do more of that. Or we did a lot of this, but I didn't really didn't feel, work. didn't yeah. really work. So let's not do that anymore. Yeah. Right. You know, so this constant checking in, uh, adjusting the, 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 the habits and, and tools that we were using, you know, helped us to get us back on course and, and back towards that horizontal vision that we were creating for what we truly wanted in our marriage. How did you, how right. did you intentionally find the time to have those important conversations with young children in your lives? Um, that's a, a great question. And um, it's interesting because when I thought about what was my favorite date that Lance and I have ever had, mm -hmm. Um, which is such a beautiful question. Mine was the kids fell asleep. They're both in bed and we opened a bottle of wine on the patio and we had this list of questions that we asked each other and we got into this wonderful conversation about positive stories from our childhood and our past and we got to know like these new characters in each other's lives of these friends that I hadn't heard about and him going into these record stores, you know, like this, this music geek, you know, doing all these things. And it was like this beautiful night where I, and this is, this was a, a, a integral piece to where our philosophy came into play that that comfortability that we feel with our fierce honesty with each other mm -hmm. happens because we have a really, really solid friendship with each other. Mm -hmm. And that I feel like I, I know him at his core and he knows me at my core. And it takes carving out that time, which for us is so same thing. Like if, if you figure out like what works and what doesn't work, if you were to say, do you have a better time when you go to a fancy dinner, hire a babysitter, you know, spend at the end of the night, you're probably 200 to $250 in versus work really hard to get both the kids to sleep and feel <laughs> giggly when you meet in the hallway and you're like, oh my gosh, they're both in bed. Grab a bottle of wine. We're going to the porch. This is awesome. Date night. Oh. Or it's a date night where in once a week, date night is, let's talk about life. It's our partnership date night. Hey, what's the schedule like? How do you feel? Where are you? You know, one to 10. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, you know, a little more on your question there about with kids is, you know, especially as they've gotten older now, but it's, 
letting the kids understand how important your marriage is, that we are number one. Yeah, you know, I think too often marriages get it wrapped around the kids, right? And so the kids become the center of the universe and that's their perception of it all. And we change that about our children and that they understand that we're the center of their universe, so to speak, you know, that that we are number one to each other. It's like that oxygen mask theory. If we're not taking care of ourselves, not taking care of our marriage, then how do we really truly take care of them in a way where they see how important our relationship right. is? You know, it's yeah. it's vital because otherwise, you know, and we realize too that when our marriage is at its best, that's when everything else just becomes a lot easier. You know, you can still, you know, I feel like I'm the best dad when my relationship with my wife is on point. You know, right. I can still be a good dad and I can still, you know, pay attention to them and everything. It's not that I could, I'm a bad dad when everything's not perfect. But I feel at my best with my kids and everything else in my life when my number one relationship, my number one priority is rocking. Right. But I would I would back up on the what the real number one priority is. Your marriage is the most rocking when you're taking care of yourself. Right. Absolutely. Right. And me, too. So it's like when I was busy, I let my health go by the wayside. I let my self-care go by the wayside. I didn't take a bath by myself with candles and decompress and get some stress out. You know, I didn't do any of that. And now I know that if I don't do that, I'm not awesome for him. And if we're not awesome together, we're not awesome for the kids. So, what you know, it's like, what's the point? I love that. Yeah. I mean, as you said, the, the marriage comes first. But before that, it sounds like focusing on how to improve first. yourself and make yes. you feel like the best person you are. And not only right. will that help you feel great, but your partner starts to think, whoa, who's this guy? And, you know, becomes right. majorly more attracted to him probably. So, so Lance, what, 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 uh, career changes or anything that's happened over the past four years have you done? And now you're feeling better. I, I mean, let's, let's hear, let's hear how that's all going. Yeah, he quit it. Like, yeah, it's um, I'm not a pharmacist anymore. You know, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, a lot of people. That's the funny thing is, there's a lot of people that think, uh, say, are you out of your mind? You know, because I went to a lot of school for that, uh, but it wasn't fulfilling me. Uh, and so that job ended. And I mean, we could go on a rabbit trail with this. So I'll try to keep it as quick as possible. But I decided that I would try to get like a, a nutritional, integrated nutritional coach. And I'd be a pharmacist and I could be like this health coach and integrate nice. all of that. And as and yeah. as I started talking to men, you know, because part of that program was talking about, you know, uh, relationships as well. And and it was weird. I don't know if it was my story with Brandy because things were going a lot better at that time and my honesty and openness about my relationship struggles with her that these men started to open up. So the, the part of this, you know, coaching them on their nutritional health really focused more on their relationships. Huh. At the same time, uh, Brandy had was doing some women's coaching or whatever else. Mm-hmm. And I, I, legendary couples in a lot of ways happened by accident. Very accident. It was very, very accidental, accidental because these guys I was talking to were like, dude, you got to give up this health coaching stuff, you know, with, you know, lifting weights and eating right and whatever else and focus on marriages because that's where my empathy, it, it comes out. I, I realized that even in, in that medical space, I could, I could help somebody with multiple diseases or that were, you know, severely obese or whatever else. But in a lot of ways, I couldn't necessarily feel what they were feeling. Mm -hmm. So when a man came to me and said, my wife is about to leave me, that's when I'm like, I'd almost like tear up and choke up and go, oh my God, I know where you've been, man. You know, let me help you. Let me help you. Let's work on this, you know? And, And so people started to take notice of our relationship. And started to ask, well, what did you guys do? And what did, what did, what are the tools and what are the resources? And so legendary couples was, was born out of that. But, it, but right. additionally, the things like we're doing now, which would be another podcast interview, but you know, we, we, we shed ourselves of all of the fancy things in our life, like the fancy house and the stuff and all that, because the trajectory of our marriage was so wonderful. We wanted to take our family in the same direction. So, and our you know, marriage and ourselves into our values even deeper. So when we first decided that we were going to jump in and do legendary couples, we created, we, we took all the things that, that we had done and learned and organized them and created a simple step-by-step course. Well, as we went back through it or in an organized way and did it for ourselves, we went, we're not living our actual vision. Mm. So what would we need to do to do that? And it was like, we have to sell all of this. 
Okay, this let's, big, let's let's dive into that. Thing? I gotta ask you more about that. So, what did you sell? <laughs> what did you change? I know it's gonna be a whole okay. other podcast, but what happened? So we had had built about you know four years prior um, a beautiful custom home where you know we had it, it was our dream home. Yeah. Like it was magazine. It was mag. It was, it was magazine. Uh, unbelievable. So, yeah. Yes. Um, and we. It, and we were we were financially smart. We didn't owe a whole lot on it, um, and it was it was worth a lot of money. And we had an opportunity when we looked at this big picture to sell this house, sell the majority of what we owned, and put ourselves in a position where we had little to no expenses and live a completely different lifestyle. Hmm. And that was one year ago tomorrow. Wow. Almost completely debt free. So yeah. we bought this little house. It's, you know, we went from a 3,500 square foot fancy home. I always tell people it had 10 sinks, four <laughs> toilets yeah. to this, this little 1,400 square foot, 75, 70, 75 year old house yeah. with one bathroom, yeah. one toilet and two sinks. And we're still alive a year later. Yeah. Everyone. And and we own it outright. We have no mortgage on it. Right. So That's I mean, great. we decided to say, you know, this is what is important to us and be able to do this and spend more time. We took our kids out of school. We homeschool, we homeschool them. them now. We got chickens out there. Uh, and it's They started, they started a, a farm business. They have a, a nursery business for their homeschooling. And so if you, if you get really clear on what you value, mm -hmm. a part that comes into that is how do you teach your kids to live by their values? Hmm. You have to radically live by your values. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you have to so show them. Based on decreasing the, the lifestyle that you had and where yeah. you are now, you were both able to pursue entrepreneurial ventures that you're both excited about. Well, the other interesting piece to that is we just started working again. We took a year off. Okay. Yeah. So we, we yeah. soft launched legendary couples with that course that she told yeah. that we took and we were like, whoa, time, time out again, out. Yeah. time out, you know, and we put it all on the back burner uh, for mm -hmm. a year while we got this sort of up and running because we didn't know how to homeschool our kids. And sure. we thought, oh. okay, well, we'll take a year of figuring some things out, which we're still figuring out, but now right. we're reincorporating legendary couples back into that whole vision, you know, of the life that we want, the life by design that we want. Right. Because part of our, our vision of life is pursuing our personal passions yeah. is, is feeling as, as though we're, we're contributing to society and showing our children that you can have life balance and work and do all of these other things. And so um, it is important that after we took that year of, you know, a, a big part of that year was a detox. So when you are living a radically self, uh, not self-paced, but um, fast-paced life, and you are on social media all the time and answering emails immediately and, and on your phone and on your laptop and all of this going on so quickly, it's really hard to stop it. So we had to go through a, de a detox process to get to where we are today, honestly. And it's like taking things off your phone, setting your phone away and just, you know, really setting some really strict boundaries on um, creating new behavior. It is, it's a really about changing your habits and your behavior. I love it. Well, you, you've excited me and probably the people who are watching this or listening right now about <laughs> being a legendary couple. So let's help us all get there and talk about how we can do it. You mentioned the four relationship principles. Can you take us through what those are and what they mean for people? Yeah, you, yeah, you're right. you're really good at this. She's, okay. As you can see, she's better at answering the questions than I am, Andy. <laughs> Lance, I bet you are excellent answering the questions. <laughs> I just have the really good hair right now. There you go. And there I, you go. Just, and I'm a, I have the bad hair, and I'm a fast talker. <laughs> so, um, the four legendary relationship elements are the first one, and it's literally like a, a little pyramid. So, the foundation of this is you. So, it's two solid U's at the bottom, and the next step and these have to go in succession, is your partnership. So before you can jump up to, I want awesome intimacy four days a week, you know that the bills are being paid and the house is being cleaned and life is being taken care of, especially as women. I don't feel ready if the garbage hasn't been taken out, and that's mm -hmm. the truth. So the next level is your friendship. 
and really getting to know each other on a level where you feel so comfortable with each other that you can experience the next level, which is lovers. And that's where the vulnerability comes in. And especially for women, just being able to let go and for men feeling confident and being able to really feel that they can be themselves in that space. And so having them go in order is really important. And I hope that that was enough of an explanation for you to see why, where, you know, this holy grail at the top is a deeply vulnerable, intimate relationship where you're madly in love with each other. Yeah, and this is the way she describes it. I love the way she describes it too. And, and, and I would add that it's it's the formula that works that works really well for long term relationships mm-hmm. because you know looking at when a relationship newly starts, you generally start, start off. Yeah, you kind of start at the top, which is friendship. You learn you're getting to know each other and whatever yeah. else, and and you often get into that you're on fire right? yeah, or lovers right away. away. Right, or lovers right away. <laughs> <laughs> that piece of it and maybe you've done some zoom work but for the most part the two people are just learning about each other trying to figure it out and then you, you get married and then suddenly like bill paying and all this other stuff that doesn't happen during the dating phase kind of happens and then you add the kids in there and suddenly you're caught in this lack of communication and this hamster wheel of figuring out who is taking out the garbage or who is paying the bills or uh, uh you know are we making enough money? All this stuff that's just like, whoa, when we were dating, that wasn't even even talked about. Mm-hmm. So you got to kind of hit that reset and say, now we need to build from that foundation back up and get, and you yearn for that, that friendship and that, that lover's peace. And, and you feel like it's lost. Without and- having, we yearn for that lover's peace, especially men. You, you yearn for that women. We yearn for the friendship. And we also yearn for the lover as well, <laughs> but um, true. We do. Yeah. Um, and, and when those other pieces are in play, it's interesting how much we yearn more for that lover's part. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing is, is that we all want that friendship and that lover's part without doing the hard work of having a solid partnership yeah. and having a solid self. And so th- the truth is, is that in order to have what you want, you have to do the hard work. And that's that base. That's the solid foundation. You know? Right. And so to answer your question a little bit further, because I I love when we leave people with really practical tools in order to get there, you have to have a vision, a shared vision on what each one of those look like. If they're at their best, what does our partnership look like? Let's talk about each one of those areas, our finances, you know, who's spending what and, and, Who's taking care of what and what does it look like for our future? When are we financially free and how do we get there? The next part is is friendship. What does it feel like and what are we doing as friends? What do we know about each other if we are deeply, deeply friends? And then as lovers, what does it look like? When we're at our prime, like when we are madly in love, what does it feel like? What are the habits we have and what does it look like? And then guess what? Just like anything else, you create a plan for it. What are the steps we take? Mm -hmm. And then you say, I commit this week to doing this for our partnership. I commit this week to doing this for our, our, our intimacy. And you, you have to get to a place too, where you follow through. How often are you guys having those types of communications together? Every week. Yeah. Well, I think the big ones, but Brandy and I, we we get up every morning and we have coffee together before the kids get up, or at least we, we try our it's getting up pretty early these days. Yeah. However, you know, uh, we're big fans of, you know, doing like the miracle morning. And so we thought, oh, let's combine forces and figure out how to, you know, to do this, this Make together. a miracle morning for couples, essentially. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so we, we communicate really well every single, every single day, but the, the big check-ins happen, you know, once a week. Yeah. Where it's it literally, and again, it sounds so lame, but it's like, okay, one to 10. Where are you feeling on our friendship? Well, you know what? That kind of sucked last week. So, and here's the key to this. It sucked last week. All right. What do we add to our schedule to bring that rating up? Hmm. Oh, our intimacy sucked last week. You know what you bring to the schedule to bring it up, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's really that simple. And I I think we overcomplicate it and we overcomplicated it for years. And we got stuck in that hamster wheel of like, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. Instead of what can we do? We agree to commit to each other to follow through with our commitments. 
and we don't overdo it. And that's the other thing where I'm, uh, I was really guilty of this, where it's like, well, I'm going to need you to do this, 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 this. And he's like, oh, God, I can't do all that in one week. And he would be like, just to appease me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. We'll do it. And then I'm like, you failed me. You know? (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you guys had to look back now that you've had all this um, you know, these good experiences and this good knowledge that you're, you're practicing yourself and now imparting on other folks. If you had to look back at the time when you started to have children, things started to get a little rocky. What's one piece of advice you'd give yourself back at that time to course correct? Um, the first thing that comes up for me is grace. Um, I think that having kids for both of us, um, brought out a lot of insecurities because it's hard and you've never done it. And you're like, I just feel like I maybe suck at it. Do we suck together? You know, are we ruining this thing? Like there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure, especially if you're, you know, a successful professional individual and you have kids, you know, you, you have this, maybe this attachment or this expectation that, well, I'm good at everything, so I'm going to be this badass and It's not parent, the same with kids. Not, they, and not. you don't even know what kind of you're going to get. And if you've had two, you know what I mean. Yeah. Right? The two first more, one's yeah. one. Yeah. And the second one, you're like, oh, whoa, I didn't, I haven't done this before again. <laughs> right? And so to have grace, especially in those first, honestly, four years, mm-hmm. when your last one is four to five, that's when things start to even out a little bit. You're not dealing... Um, you know, with a drunk little person that can't quite get their little, th- right. Yeah. <laughs> almost four, there. <laughs> four or five. You're almost there. It's true. I mean, they're crazy people. They, are. they don't even know what they want. And then they're irrational about how to get it. And it's like, no, that's not the coping mechanism you're supposed to use, but that's all, you know, you're four, you know, or three or two or whatever it is. So I would, I would definitely say grace. Um, yeah, that, that's really big one that you and I have talked about, you know, I would have, say plan to yeah. have, a, have a good, a clear plan. We didn't have a plan. No, we mm-hmm. didn't even, we were just like, Oh, let's just wake up the next day and just, let's just do it. You got the shoes. I've got the bag. Let's just go. We're like zombies, <laughs> you know? And really if we would have just sat down and did our, you know, it's our, our free plan on our website. You know, if we would have just sat down and done that plan once a year even, mm-hmm. and just said, okay, what does this look like? And what can we do to keep our marriage at least in the, in the arena, you know, our marriage wasn't even in the arena anymore. It was all these other things. And to just to, to bring it back and. Yeah. And to remember a big one is to remember that you're a team, you know, you're on the same team. You're not enemies. You know, you're not working against each other. You're trying to work together, you know, for a common goal. And it's not easy. It's It's not not easy. easy. Not when they're little, especially. Yeah. You know, it's that big radical change of having kids, you know, that we talk about people start to yearn for that that past. And just like she said, having that grace and that understanding that you are a a team and and this moment, it doesn't last forever. This challenging moment doesn't last forever and that it does get easier, you know, over time. It does. And and I have to say that I, I wish that someone would have talked to us about this stuff back then, because there is hope. Like I think about what if, when it was at its worst, if I really would have walked away and we wouldn't have what we have today. Like I would be so incredibly sad. And I was literally, I I was done. I was ready to walk away. Well, that's a perfect segue for helping people. Where's the best place for people to find you and where's the best place for them to start on this legendary couple journey? legendarycouples.com mm-hmm. and at the very top is our our free relationship planning guide and it it really is for free it's a and it's simple it's not rocket science just you just have to do it mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's the thing like you can give things away for free but if they don't do it it doesn't you, they, they do the work i mean we realized yeah. we had to do the work i mean right. it's, we still do the work Right. We yeah. still we still do the work. Just like anything that's a priority and important in your life, yep. you have you to do. Stop, what work. happens when you stop working out? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, eating the cheeseburgers. You know, yep. it's the same thing. Same yep. analogy, both for your your health or your wealth or your relationship. Right. It totally makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, thank you both so much for your time. This was uh, so personally really moving for me. I'm in a very similar situation as you guys or you have been over the past four years. So I really appreciate learning from you tonight. And uh, 
I, I hope a lot of people who are listening right now can take away something special for their marriages as well. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Thanks Andy. for having us. Yeah.